Chairman Van Hollen, thank you. Um, I want to thank your staff as well for our partnership through this appropriations process. Uh, I think we've uh, made a lot of progress, and I appreciate your holding this important hearing today. Uh, Chairman Gensler, I want to welcome you. I look forward to your opening statement as well. Last week, the full committee approved the fiscal year 2024 financial services and general government appropriations bill by a vote of 29 to 0, which is no small feat. The last time the committee unanimously approved the FSGG bill was in September of 2019. And interesting, that was the last time that the chairman of the SEC came before the subcommittee. So we're pleased to see you here today. As I mentioned, the last time the subcommittee met, my top priority as ranking member is to work with my colleagues to conduct rigorous oversight, strengthen U.S. financial markets, and ensure that taxpayer dollars are spent responsibly. The American financial system is one of our greatest assets and advantages, and having access to deep, liquid markets has been critical to our role as the world leader in innovation and economic prosperity. Congress is currently debating the SEC's budget for fiscal year 2024, which is significant. I'm familiar with the day-to-day -day administrative work of the agency and have great respect for the career staff. We need to fund that work. My concern, however, is when the agency diverts these resources and spends these dollars on initiatives not even within the authority of the SEC. And here are a few specific examples. Chair Gensel, your climate change proposal. Many sophisticated commentators believe that this is well beyond the SEC's authority. We know it's costly, meaning tens of billions of dollars or more as companies struggle to comply. We know small firms will particularly be hurt. We also know it's unlikely to provide meaningful insight for return-oriented investors, but it will be a bonanza for the lawyers who will have a new cottage industry. Yet the SEC blindly pushes ahead, consuming vast resources now, and that will be compounded when the inevitable lawsuits come pouring in. Then there are the actions concerning shareholder proposals and proxy advisors. A study from Harvard Law School showed that five individuals account for roughly 40% of all shareholder proposals here. That's a remarkable concentration of power. 50 million households have to consider the whims of five individuals. The SEC had made progress on limiting this abuse of power, but this was reflexively undone in 2021 with no study, increasing the number of pet proposals flowing in and even allowing shareholder proposals that would require companies to break the law. Because shareholder proposals are so inexpensive to create, because shareholder proposals are now flooding the zone as a result, investors turn to so-called proxy advisors for voting recommendations. Many, in effect, outsource their voting to these proxy advisors. The two leading firms are a duopoly, both foreign-owned, wielding vast influence over American public companies, which creates many obvious conflicts. Mr. Chairman, your predecessor, Jay Clayton, after lengthy public comment, made changes to the regulation of these proxy advisor firms requiring them to be more transparent and to give companies time to correct proposals' errors, including those that recommend votes for proposals that would require them to break the law. You took away that transparency and the opportunity for better information. So by virtue of your actions, you increased the business of the proxy firms, made them less accountable, and reduced the quality of information available to shareholders. This, too, is now being litigated over whether, through this process, you failed to follow the Administrative Procedure Act. Regardless of the outcome, I can tell you that these so-called proxy advisors are making our financial markets significantly weaker and less democratic. There are other examples, shortened comment periods, treating related proposals as separate to avoid considering the cumulative and combined effects, introducing new final rules that include key points not in the proposal subject to public comment. The list goes on. This issue is not unique to the SEC. Like Lena Khan at the FTC, ignoring procedural requirements and losing in court seems to be worth the price to push our markets to the left. In fact, in the enforcement arena, it seems that you're willing to bring cases that you must know have very high odds of losing. And perhaps you think making a statement is worth the loss. Well, what do you say to the person who has to defend themselves in one of these messaging cases? Do you apologize? Do you thank them? There's no good answer here. Because in America, we should never use our law enforcement authority on innocent people to make statements. And we certainly shouldn't hamper the efficiency and competitiveness of our capital markets to score political points. While we need referees that enforce the market rules and punish bad actors, I'm concerned that the SEC has moved well beyond its role as a market regulator and is seeking to make policies that are both beyond its authority and destructive to our economy. In summary, 
This committee's job is to ensure the SEC has the resources it needs to fulfill its statutory duties and that it's using those resources appropriately. And your job, Mr. Chairman, is to be a responsible steward of those resources and stay within your boundaries. And I'm concerned that that's not happening. This requires accountability. Yet inadequate responses to congressional directives and questions, including many that I've sent myself, suggest a resistance to accountability, and that makes today's hearing all the more important. So I look forward to your opening statement, Mr. Chairman, and to the opportunity to discuss these matters further. Thank you. Uh, thank, uh, thank you, Senator Haggerty. Um, and I don't know if the um, Vice Chair wants to. OK. Thank you. Um, so let me just turn the floor over to you uh, now, uh, Chairman Gensler, uh, for your statement. If you could keep it within uh, five minutes, uh, that would be helpful to the committee. And I should say, if you see members popping up and down, 